As inflation continues to ease, the price we're paying for our food is still going up. Part of the reason is that because many farmers, they're struggling to stay afloat. The Department of Agriculture this week announced more than $900 million in investment projects. This will help create more jobs and expand renewable energy in rural communities, the administration hopes. For more on this, I'm joined by the Secretary of Agriculture, Tom Vilsack. Mr. Secretary, welcome. Thank you. I, I was struck by the numbers for farmers. We all know prices are increasing, but uh, according to the USDA, production costs are estimated to rise 18% in 2022, and land is up by 12.4%, which is the highest on record, I understand, since the farm crisis in the 70s, which you know about well, having come from, from Iowa. How tough are things for farmers right now? Well, here's what's interesting, John. We actually uh, just recorded a record level of income for American agriculture. Uh, net cash income at a record level this year, uh, surpassing uh, the level from last year. We've also experienced record exports. Uh, so it's a, it's a challenging time in the sense that not all of the benefits of those records are going to all of the farmers. And that's one of the reasons why we're looking at strategies to increase the number of ways in which farmers can make a living. Uh, that's why climate smart agriculture is so incredibly important because it opens up new avenues, uh, new revenue streams for farmers. That's why the bio-based economy turning agricultural waste uh, into a variety of different products like renewable fuels uh, for uh, planes and for boats and for cars is also one of the reasons why we're focused on creating new revenue streams for farmers. So uh, while there are challenges, uh, the good news is the inflation rate in terms of food, is the rate is coming down. Uh, and if you look at what's really driving that rate, you're going to see flour costs, for example, is driving it. Why is that? Well, because Russia invaded the Ukraine and roiled uh, the wheat markets. Uh, poultry sometimes can uh, see higher prices. Why is that? Because we're currently dealing with avian influenza, which has impacted and affected uh, poultry. Uh, so there are reasons why we're seeing some higher costs, but the good news is the rate is coming down. So, Mr. Secretary, when I help people understand you talked about the the record level of income um, if it's not broadly shared across all different kinds of farmers uh, because I I feel like for the last many years and I was just in Erie Pennsylvania and heard what I felt like is a very familiar story over the years which is people saying small farms are disappearing those people who are not into in a big agricultural uh, uh, operation are really fighting at the margins and they they just have no margin at all to live. Is that not the case with this record uh, income? Well, that's the reason why we're looking at ways in which we can increase opportunities for small and mid-sized farming operations. There are a number of strategies. First of all, we are rebuilding and reconstructing a local and regional food system. We learned during the pandemic that while our system is incredibly efficient, it wasn't as resilient as it needed to be. So we're creating new market opportunities for farmers to be able to sell locally to schools, uh, to restaurants, to grocery stores. That's one opportunity. Uh, the Climate Smart uh, 141 projects that we recently announced where we're investing uh, over $3 billion uh, to create a climate smart commodity, which will be a higher value proposition. And you'll see uh, just this week we announced uh, 71 projects that are focused on small farm holders, on underserved and historically underserved producers being able to benefit from this program. Uh, so uh, there are a lot of things that are currently operating under this administration that are going to help alleviate some of the pressure and stress that farmers have felt for quite some time. Here, here's, the, here's the real uh, nut of all of this, John. Uh, for many, many years, the message that was sent to American agriculture is produce more, produce more. Uh, and the reality is, if to produce more, you have to spread the cost of that over larger and larger operations. So, and so it accelerated and led to uh, this consolidation of land uh, ownership. What we're trying to do in the Biden administration is create a new model of transforming the American agricultural economy to one that creates multiple streams, multiple revenue streams, so that those small and mid-sized operators can, in fact, uh, survive. Uh, I was struck when I first became secretary again by the fact that 89.6% of American farm families uh, on small and mid-sized farms do not generate the majority of income for their family from the farming operation. In other words, they have to work a second or third job to be able to keep the farm. And what we're trying to do over the course of the next several years is to begin the process of reversing that so that people can actually make a living uh, from their farming operation. So the, the, on Monday, you were in Alabama announcing $325 million in investment in what you've been talking about, the climate smart commodities. So this is not just about a 
cleaner climate future. Your argument is for these small and mid-sized farming operations, there is a product they can create that will be more valuable for them. Is that right? And can you give us a, a quick example of what such a prog product would look like? Sure. Uh, there are rice farmers uh, in uh, Arkansas and Louisiana, uh, that uh, African-American rice farmers, who will be working with the USA Rice Federation and a number of other companies and organizations to look at a different way of uh, irrigating the rice uh, so that it reduces the amount of methane. Here's what happens. When you do that, you are able to give those farmers the ability to go to food processors that are using rice to be able to say this rice has been uh, sustainably produced. It also will allow those farmers uh, to potentially participate in what we call ecosystem markets, the ability to essentially sell credits uh, based on the environmental result that they're getting from trying this climate smart practice. That's another source of income. There may well be waste product that's generated from the production of rice. That too can be converted into a wide variety of ingredients and processing. So it not only creates additional revenue streams for farmers, but also will increase and enhance job opportunities in rural places. Yep. And hopefully that will take some of the pressure off uh, some of the larger cities that uh, where so many people from rural America over the course of the last several decades have moved to. Let me ask you about an immediate cr uh, climate crisis, which is the drought emergency that's been declared in all of Southern California. Uh, I know 14 senators have written you a letter uh, asking for the department to do something. Is there anything that's being done in either the smart climate or anything that the, the, the department is doing to try to handle that emergency? Well, first of all, uh, the, the senators may, may be reminded of the fact that they actually voted for and provided the Department of Agriculture $10 billion uh, to provide assistance and help for those who have been hit by drought. Uh, which we are in the process and have been d dispersing roughly six billion dollars of that has already been provided to farmers who have been impacted and affected by drought then there are the traditional uh, uh, disaster assistance programs at the usda everything from crop insurance uh, to uh, livestock forage programs that provide assistance and help to those who farming operations have been negatively impacted by drought uh, in terms of the Inflation Reduction Act, there are resources within that Inflation Reduction Act that will go into the traditional conservation programs, the EQIP program, the Conservation Stewardship Program, and many of those resources can in fact be used uh, to uh, focus on precision irrigation, to, to use water more effectively, more efficiently. And then finally, uh, there's also a significant amount of research that the United States Department of Agriculture is already doing. Then when you add on top of that the fact that a number of the 141 projects that we are now supporting for climate smart commodities will in fact impact and affect the use of water, uh, the more efficient use of water, uh, and will be able to impact and affect uh, how we grow fruits and vegetables, for example, in the future. So there's a lot going on uh, in this space. We certainly appreciate the Senator's interest in this and look forward to working with them uh, as we deal with the, the uh, 2023 Farm Bill. Final question, uh, Mr. Secretary. In, in President Biden's first COVID relief bill, money was set aside for black farmers who, as a group, have experienced discrimination over the years uh, and who just dis disappeared faster than the rate for all farmers, which has been dwindling. In subsequent legislation, that support for black farmers was reduced. Bloomberg carried a headline recently, Biden is still failing America's black farmers, and black farmers are now uh, taking the administration to court. So. What's being done to answer the concerns of, of these farmers? Well, John, first of all, uh, I will say that we're really pleased with the fact that the Inflation Reduction Act did provide $3.1 billion of debt relief uh, for uh, distressed farmers, which would include African-American farmers. And in fact, uh, relief has already been provided to approximately 13,000 farming families uh, who were delinquent uh, or behind in their payments uh, to the Department of Agriculture. They have now been brought up to date and in fact have been given some breathing room as a result of the investment of a portion of that $3.1 billion. We're now in the process of working with farmers who may have already gone into bankruptcy uh, to try to provide some assistance and help. We're looking at farmers that uh, essentially refinanced or restructured their loans as a result of, of COVID and the pandemic. Uh, so we're uh, allowing them to basically uh, get some relief as well. We'll go to a second phase of this. We're looking and uh, researching uh, those who do business directly with the USDA in terms of whether or not we anticipate that they're going to face cash flow problems in the future. And if so, what can we do with the, the, the remaining portion of that $3.1 billion to provide loan servicing in a way that would re uh, calculate their, their principal of their loan or reduce their interest rate or make a payment or two on behalf of those farmers. It's a new model 
instead of focusing on foreclosure when farmers get behind, we're focusing on trying to keep people on the land. That's number one. Number right. two, there's additional $2 billion uh, that's going to be available for uh, the uh, compensation for those who have been discriminated against. We just closed our last listening session in trying to determine how best to design that program uh, to complement uh, payments that have already been made in the past uh, to folks who have experienced discrimination. So there's that mm -hmm. going on. The third, we're expanding significantly the ability to use procure, our, the federal procurement opportunities. We buy a lot of food. Uh, and in the past, we've been buying that food from large-scale institutional providers of food products for our food banks and for school lunch programs and so forth. Well, now we're working with states through cooperative agreements to ensure that a portion of those procurement dollars yep. are spent with and invested mm -hmm. in local and regional uh, food, right. food uh, Mr. producers, Mr. including Secretary. minority producers. So uh, I, I could go on. There's, you, a, there's a I tremendous wish, amount going I on would, in this space. I wish we could ind indulge you to go on, Mr. Secretary, but we've run out of time. But we're very grateful you were here, uh, Secretary of Agriculture, Tom Vilsack. Thank you.